Hello everyone, I'm Professor Geek, welcome back to my channel, and welcome to my review of Action Comics 1000. I promised to move on from Superman a little bit after this, I, I, uh, he's my favorite character so I can easily get obsessed and just speak about nothing but him for quite a few videos in a row, but because this is hot right now and this is the big issue and a big deal, I spend a good amount of time poring over Action Comics 1000 after I, of course, voraciously read it uh, as soon as I could because it was just so much fun and such a landmark issue. But I'd like to give a brief review. So this is going to be a non-spoiler review. I won't talk about any spoiler content from each individual story. First of all, though, let's just talk about how cool those variants are. I'm not a big Jim Lee fan, so when it was announced that Jim Lee was doing the cover and everything, I, you know, I, it's passable. I like the pose with hands on the hips. I like the the trunks are back. That's wonderful. You know, I've talked about that. But uh, I just I just don't think Jim Lee is a Superman artist. Uh, all of his faces look a bit alike. Yeah, I just don't. I don't know. He 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 impresses me far more as a Batman artist at times. But I'm not a huge Jim, fan of Jim Lee's art in general. I recognize the wonderful things he's done for the industry before the New Fifty Two. <laughs> <laughs> that is not one of them. But anyway, those variant covers, though, were just amazing. My comic shop was just wonderful and gave me a great deal on the variants, so I was able to get all of them, actually. And I'm really proud of that collection. And so, uh, Mike Allred's, the Silver Age from Mike Allred, is just amazing. That is so beautiful to have, and the, the way he references Kurt Swan and all that wonderful Silver Age stuff. And... Of course, Dave Gibbons, I love that one, just the, the fun of that one and the, and the little aliens attacking him. The Dan Jurgens one is gorgeous, really very reminiscent of his time with the character back in the 90s. And Michael Cho, that's wonderful. And I'm always a sucker for Lee Bermejo. Some of my favorite artistic renditions of Superman were in Batman Noel, when he casts Superman as the Ghost of Christmas Present. That is just a gorgeous work. Uh, his his cover for Action Comics isn't of that caliber, but it's slightly reminiscent. Um, the face is a little weird, but anyway. Uh, so there's a lot of great variant covers, and it's just so wonderful to see people celebrating you know, the hero and so many artists on board for that. And the writers and artists inside Action Comics 1000 were really quite great too. So just a quick rundown. I won't go too long with this. But the first short story here is from Dan Jurgens. And Dan Jurgens is doing the art and writing. Nork, Norm Rapmund is on inks. And this is for the city that has everything. And this is a great story. It's about Metropolis doing a thank you Superman Day and honoring Superman Day. And it really is great. The one thing of, of note, I mean, it, it, all of these, well, for the most part, all of these stories give you all the warm fuzzies that they're supposed to, that a, a landmark issue like this should, celebrating the character. Here, we're not talking about getting into heavy drama or developing, you know, this and that. We're supposed to just be celebrating the character, and Superman, more than any other character, can really inspire you in these short stories, and Dan Jurgens delivers with that. There's one point where, and this isn't really a spoiler, but one point Wonder Woman shows up on the page, and she's still in this awful new costume with all the armor and stuff and it just looks it, it's very glaring her presence in that costume and i've talked about her costume before and i love the wonder woman character for those new to the channel adore her she's one of my top three but uh the, I, i've done a recent video on what her costume should be and this this armored one isn't cutting it and to see that next to superman and all of his glory restored with the trunks and everything just a little like ouch you know but uh but the story's wonderful and the art's gorgeous highly recommend it the next story is by peter tomasi makes sense since jurgens and tomasi have been delivering so many great stories and superman in action comics recently and that's another great story tomasi really understands the superman family and he really understands the legacy that superman has as a character and what he wants to leave to his son and i think his story really embodies that so beautifully so good job with that and that art was done by patrick gleason who's been working with him on the superman title then we have uh, some names from the past marv wolfman did a really fun story with the great curse Swan penciling there which is a lot of fun so that was great um Another good story. I won't go too far into these, but really touching. And then we have Jeff Johns and Richard Donner. And I was really wondering, okay, you know, this is a compilation of short stories, basically. So Jeff Johns and Richard Donner, those are two huge names for Superman. And Richard Donner coming back, of course, they collaborated on Last Son of Krypton, which was such a great story arc. So I was looking forward to what they could do, but I was almost a little disappointed that they were only going to be doing something in a short story form, but man, they delivered. And they really, again, without spoiling it, they, they pick up and tell a little story that happens right after that iconic moment 
from Action Comics 1 with Superman lifting the car. And if you've read that original story that Superman was in, it features some of those gangsters and everything. And uh, it was a really great, great story. So good, good, good twist on that. And that's called The Car by Jeff Johns and Rich Donner. Then we have two stories, one by Scott Snyder and the next one by Tom King. And I guess Snyder and King had to be in this issue because they are two of the big writers at DC right now. They're not bad stories at all. And they're not, you know, betrayals of Superman's character by any, any means. But they just, they just miss the mark of the super fuzzies that you're supposed to feel when you're reading through these stories and the really you know, sweet inspiration. They're not bad stories, but the Scott Snyder story is a typical Scott Snyder story. You're left with more questions than answers by the end of it, thinking, well, Wait, what was now? Now was that here or was that there? And what was going? Now did they? Did Lex Luthor see this happening or you know, this thing that's happening over here? Is that this? And it just it's, uh, he just he loves the vague. He loves to be obscure, and an obscure ending isn't exactly one that's going to give you the, the warm fuzzies that you should be feeling with a Superman story from this kind of issue. Tom King uh, does a great story as well. I mean, Tom King's a good writer, but it just he doesn't he doesn't deliver the uh, the Superman inspiration as as the other writers do because they're just not that type of writer and i guess they had to be included I, i'm not criticized i don't hate them as writers by any means i think they're really great at what they do but what they do should never be superman <laughs> so i'm a little concerned about the justice league stuff that snyder's going to be doing but uh, but we'll see we'll, we'll cut him the benefit of the doubt until we see it uh next story is by louise simonson of course a big name in art by jerry ordway that's so great to see and that's another really great story, a uh, fun story that deals with the Daily Planet a lot. Then we have Action Land by the great Paul Dini. And as I've mentioned before on this channel, Paul Dini is, if I had to pick one comic book writer that I that just has never disappointed me ever, it would be Paul Dini. He's just amazing. And the stuff that he's done with Batman and Superman. And Jose Luis Garcia Lopez is on the art and Kevin Nolan on the inks. I mean, how much, that's just like the superstars of, of comic books right there <laughs> writing this story. And it's a really great little story. And I won't tell you much about it at all because it's kind of hard to talk about without spoiling, but it deals with some great characters that are well known to uh, all of these people, Paul Dini especially. So that's a great one. And then we have a short story from Brad Meltzer. And I was a little concerned. I saw his name. I thought, okay, Brad Meltzer is a really good writer. He really is. He's, he knows how to craft a story. But in comics, he's probably best known for the Identity Crisis story arc that he gave us, which a lot of people who appreciate the iconic versions of these characters really fault that for being a big moment that, that, that where the continuity started to fall and, and that you know led right on into the new 52 honestly and I so but a lot of people fault Meltzer for that and I don't think Meltzer's really to blame for that because the even identity crisis is a very well written tale if you just take that as a as a standalone story it's it's quite well done I think it's just the editor the editor's decisions to to make the whole universe really you know reverberate with that and stuff like that so but I was wondering what kind of story was he going to give us and I was really surprised. He gave us a wonderful, it, it's got his signature on it, you know, that bread melter style. And it really is great. And I love the ending. And I'm just really, really super impressed with Brad Meltzer's story. That was great. Art by John Cassidy and uh, great art there as well. There's some pinups throughout the, the issue that are, are really nice by some different artists. Then we end with Brian Michael Bendis's story. And this is the story that's going to be kicking off his Man of Steel run the limited run that's coming out soon and then of course he's going to take over action and, and superman we've talk, talked about that before and how i'm worried and, and the, there's some problems with giving one person all of a character like that uh, as big of a character as superman anyway but my only criticism here there, there's really there's simply not enough of his story to judge his story yet it's a few pages of story there's just not enough yet he's not we have not received enough of the story at all to to know what he's doing with anything so I don't think it's fair to criticize his greater story arc that he's leading into by anything that we've seen so far. My critique is that this story was included in Action Comics 1000. Because this is not a story to be included in this kind of celebration issue. It, it felt like reading this whole issue felt like going through a box of cupcakes and just glorying in the rich frosting and the delicious sweets of each cupcake. And then the very, you reach for the last cupcake in the little box and you pull out a Brussels sprout. <laughs> That's what it felt like. Not that there's anything wrong with Brussels sprouts. They can be prepared in their own ways and in their own context and wonderful parts of other meals or whatever. I'm not really a Brussels sprout guy, but you know, 
go with the metaphor anyway. So there's nothing wrong with that. But the problem is you don't put it inside a box of cupcakes. And, and that's what Mike, Brian Michael Bendis's story in Action Comics 1000 was. It was a Brussels sprout in a box of cupcakes. It might be a wonderful dish on its own. It might lead into some really great things. I don't know yet. But it re- really was just dumbass editing putting that in Action Comics 1000. And it goes back all squarely on the shoulders of Mr. Dan Didio, or Didio, or however you pronounce his name. I, I, why is this man still getting work in comics? He, every decision he's ever made has just been boneheaded. And I'm, I'm praying and hoping and praying that these decisions that he seems to have made about Superman that Brian Michael Mendes is going to put into play. I'm really, really hoping they don't see my worst fears embodied. But, uh, but I'm nervous. So anyway, uh, I'm not going to let that story sully the, the experience and the memory of this wonderful 1000th issue. I think if you grab it, if you're not big into the continuities and what DC is going to do with Superman now, if you just read all of the wonderful stories and then skip that last one, uh, it's fine. And again, that last one might be part of what could be a great story. I don't know where it's going to go. I just think that it was a mistake to make it a part of this compilation because it did hurt the overall package a bit. But definitely highly recommend the issue regardless. It's it's just a must-have. Even if you're not really following comics right now, you really need this 1,000th issue. The stories will really warm your heart and celebrate everything that Superman should be. Some of the variants are still out there. You can get the variants online. It's $7.99 for the issue, and I don't believe the variants are any, any more than that. I know I've got a great deal from my comic shop but you can still order them elsewhere so take a look at the variants and and get one or more than one that you think would be great they're going to be great on my wall i'm framing them as well and putting them up Uh, so highly recommend action comics 1000 let me know what your favorite story was it's always a given that paul dini's is one of my favorites but other people just did some great stories in there as well that jurgens one to open up with was hard to beat and and tomasi's and Oh, Wolfman's and Simonson's and everything. There's just there's just so many good stuff there. So I'd like to know what your favorite uh, stories and artists from, and variant covers from this issue were. And what do you think about Snyder and King stories? Am I being unfair to them? Uh, again, I'm not saying they're bad writers or they're poorly written. I just don't think they do this type of writing and they don't do this type of character well. That doesn't play into their gifts as writers. So love to hear from you. And I will be back very soon with some more comic reviews because lots of great stuff is going on. And I will most definitely be talking about Avengers Infinity War. I'm going to give a little pre-movie release talk about that. And I will definitely post a review as well on the channel here. So until then, keep enjoying and digging deeper into the superhero stories you love. And thanks for watching.